everybody, welcome back to another episode of Edge Than 30 UK Media. Uh, you guys noticed in my previous video, I went over the car, um, some of the stuff that I would, was going to do to the car to keep it uh, running nice and smooth. Just regular maintenance items, uh, preventive maintenance. A couple things I didn't mention that I noticed about the car was that um, when I was idling, uh, the RPMs would kind of go up and down and uh, it would kind of drop when it was cold. So we'll talk a little bit about that and then we'll talk a little about like, you know, um, uh, the tires because, you know, I had to get some new tires for the car. But um, anyway, this video is basically uh, about a month in of ownership of the RSX 2004 model, which comes with the K20A2 engine. Um, and uh, I did a lot of maintenance items on the car just to keep it running smooth. Um, but for the most part, um, I've owned a 2006 model RSX Type S. You guys noticed in my uh, couple of videos from a couple years ago. And uh, now I own a 2004 model, which is the first generation RSX Type S. And I think they're both really great cars. Um, so right now, like the car is running on a new uh, stage one e uh, Exidy organic clutch. A little bit slightly stiffer than OEM. Slightly stiffer than OEM. Um, and the engagement point is a little bit higher. Um, and I got that off of K-Series parts. You guys have asked me uh, where I've gotten some of my RSX parts from, and bo mostly it's just from Amazon, eBay, or K-Series parts. They have a lot of, a lot of things that are OEM. Um, so this clutch, is, it's a stage one. I got, I got this because I'm gonna, probably gonna be tracking this car a little bit once I have the bolt-ons in and I get it tuned. Um, so we're gonna just try to get everything up to speed first before we get into that game. Um, but yeah. I'm actually driving on um, freeway right now. I'm just going to pick up some face mask, and uh, yeah, there's nobody on the road. But yeah, I mean, uh, going back to the car, um, it is running a stage one uh, organic clutch with a Lighten 11 pound uh, competition clutch flywheel. And when you pair the car with these two items right off the get go, now that I'm driving the car with about, I think, two or 300 miles on the new clutch and the new flywheel setup now. I, I feel the car is a little bit lighter. It's not as tired and it's not slipping. Um, the revs, they go a lot higher. Uh, they rev up and down and uh, it drops a lot quicker. So, um, you know, the car has less weight and when you have less weight, um, there's more, you have more room to, to drive faster and it's more efficient. You save a little bit of gas mileage. So in general, less weight on the car is better, especially if you're gonna be like, you know, driving it uh, spiritedly for fun on the track so um, yeah just just keep that in mind um, second of all uh, I replaced a starter and I think it's something that like when you buy an RSX you're gonna just have to just do it anyway um, it's a little a little bit annoying to do because you have to take off the intake manifold but it does give you a chance to replace the intake manifold with the newer intake manifold gasket and I actually got the Hondata one which is a little bit thicker and it, it sticks um, a lot a lot better so you can actually kind of like Take it on and off, on and off. If you have to do work on your intake manifold, if you're gonna upgrade to like a larger, larger intake manifold or like a, or like a larger 70 millimeter throttle body, you can you can just take it off and use the same gasket. It's a little bit different material than the paper one that comes um, factory from 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 Honda. Um, but other than that, uh, so far the car has been really good. Uh, new starter, the car starts up fine. I literally just put a new battery today because the old battery was was dying. I think that's because the old owner like had the old battery in there forever and uh, I, I would hook it up to a trickle charger but um, after I think a few days it would just die like completely dead so got a new battery and uh, it comes with three year uh, door last I got the gold the gold type so plus it's auto zone it's right next to my house like literally so uh, um, if anything happens I could just swap it out again uh, third thing that I that was in the car was the um, I got new tires for the car and the old tires it's funny because they look good right but when you look a lot closer you'll notice that like there's some some cracks in the tread right and um, even though like the owner didn't drive that much but if you leave the tire sitting for so long it's on a dry rot and when it dry rots uh, pretty much um, you're gonna have to replace it because it's kind of dangerous to drive and da it's dangerous for the car so let's make sure you do that um, and yeah just basically just 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 keep that in mind when you're when you're driving the car when you're getting um, getting a chance to uh, 
inspect the tires because if you don't inspect the tires and you just go and drive and you're driving like long distances to like say I don't know like six seven hours away from your house it's dangerous because you might get into an accident you know um, but yeah so keep in mind I got new tires I think I got the Raptor Zegan they're just like basic tires because I'm not planning to run um, the stock setup for so long I'm just gonna get all the maintenance up and running first before I start updating the car and before I actually start to um, mod it especially tune it um, so for now we're just gonna just do all the maintenance items first and uh, um, another thing I want to talk about was actually uh, on the car uh, I noticed on cold starts especially not that the starter was going bad but also my idling was kind of go up and, you know up and down like it was really like dropping to like seven six hundred rpm sometimes even to like 200 rpm and it would feel like it would stall but it wouldn't stall it would kind of bog right so I did a little bit of research I even cleaned the the um, throttle body I sprayed the carb cleaner in there I made sure that it was clean I opened up the butterfly valve clean inside there but it wasn't fixing the problem so um, I did a little bit of research and I found out that it's the IAC valve it's an intake air control idle valve that went bad so once I replaced that everything was a lot smoother and uh, uh, you can't it's hard to get those brand new now so you have to have to like get it on eBay I got one that was OEM, but it was refurbished. It was hand, uh, sandblasted, so that way everything is still clean. Um, I inspected before I installed it on the car, and, and so far I've, I haven't had any more issues with the idling. So if you're having idle issues, guys, clean your throttle body with carb cleaner, and if that still doesn't do it, replace it with the um, IAC valve, IACV valve, intake air idle control valve, and that should do the trick. Get, try to stick with OEM as much as you can, especially when it comes to like sensors and, and stuff like that. Um, um, yeah, so. Third of all, I got the uh, my valve adjustment done. Right now that I'm driving the car again, it idles a lot smoother. Exhaust though kind of died down a little bit. Um, the intake side was a, a little bit loose. Exhaust side was not as loose as the intake side, but once I tightened that, um, it was a lot better. So make sure you replace all the grommets, uh, spark plug tube seals, and, and, and put in some new spark plugs while you can. Um, just to make regular you know wear and tear items. And uh, I'm thinking about for the future maybe upgrading uh, injectors or just getting new OEM injectors because I think over time after 100k miles you're running on the same injectors and they make it clog. You can clean them, but for the for the for the cost of taking it apart, shipping it to the sh cleaning company, your paper shipping, why not just get new injectors? You know, saves you the time you're just swapping in and out. You have to ship anything out. Um, and uh, in my previous video, I also talked about uh, just. Minor items such as like power steering fluid, um, you don't really notice a big difference when you change the power steering fluid. Other than, you know, there's there's maybe less wine, um, there's new fluid, so it goes uh, smoother through the system. The pump doesn't have to work as hard. Uh, new serpentine belt. My actually old belt was cracked, so uh, new belt gives you peace of mind. Alternator is still good, so I don't need to replace that yet. Um, something I did notice was uh, my motor mount was cracked. The the front driver's side, right side motor mount was cracked, so I had to replace that. So once I replaced that. Um, I haven't replaced it, but once I replace it, 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 I guess I'll have more more grip. And then when I drive it hard, I guess it'll keep the motor in place. I did think about uh, getting like the Hasport mounts, the more like the metal, like the more um, hard type mounts, where it's basically for like racing. Um, the engine does vibrate a lot when idling, especially if the AC is on. It. But hey, why not, right? Because the race car. But I think I'm gonna stick with OEM. I like it just smooth. I don't want it to be like too crazy, you know, like to like have the whole car shake. Especially if I'm gonna passengers, and I don't want them to like, you know, get like a massage in the car. Um, but also, I didn't mention this, but I replaced the intake. My intake was actually cracked. The intake housing. So I just used a chance to just upgrade to a uh, engine short ram intake. It is carb legal. So if you guys are watching my channel and you're in California, you gotta be careful because if you take your car into the smog place and, and the ref sees your car and it's like not carb legal, he's gonna he's gonna fail you. So make sure you you get that done. Right, so the intake does feel a lot better. Uh, we'll do a little quick, uh, quick pull real quick for you guys. Maybe you can hear it. You guys can hear the intake. It's pretty loud. But when you're just driving normally and you're cruising, it's not that loud. So um, when I was underneath the car, I noticed also the stock exhaust was actually really bent. I think I don't know if the last owner ran over something, but. In the halfway through the, the the piping from the Cali converter back to the exhaust it's like bent up so I guess it's another item that I'm gonna eventually um, swap out but not anytime soon I think I'm probably going with the same exhaust I went with my first R6 the Tanabe medallion I really like that exhaust it's not too loud it looks clean looks stock um, 
Also, I need to wiring a dash cam for the car, which I already purchased. I'm waiting for the just uh, the wiring adapter to come in, and I have a, an, an old radar detector. I'm someone's gonna hook up to the car, uh, so I'll make a video about that. You guys can check it out. But other than that, um, this is a driving review of my 2004 Acura RSX Type S. Th those of you guys that are new to the channel, please like, comment, and subscribe. It is my second RSX, and I love the RSX. Uh, but I think second time through, I think I know a little bit more about the car this time, and I'm gonna do do it right and do it well. So um, yeah, I hope you guys like this video and the car drives great. Just to recap everything, um, right now I have a new starter in, new intake ma uh, manifold gasket, new IAC V-valve with the gasket, um, new spark plugs, uh, valve adjustment, and new seals all around. Um, also, I resealed all the seals in the back with the Honda, uh, not Honda, the uh, Shinetsu grease from, I think it's, it's what OEM Honda dealer uses lubricate all the seals and leave it over 24 hours and it'll expand basically brings back old seals to life i'll, I'll post a, a little picture um, or a link where you guys can get that but yeah i really recommend using the shinetsu grease for all your seals and uh while you're while i had the car apart before when i did the black and tear i read i swapped out all the clips for um new clips so the car just is more sturdy um other than that the car has been great if you do those maintenance items on the car i think i think you'll be good to go for, for a while. So make sure you do the wear and tear items, you know, like the bushings, I think those are shot. I'll probably get to those. The motor mines for sure. Compliance bushings are cracked. The compliance bushings go first before all the other bushings tend to go. So just do all those regular items and you should be good to go. So if you guys have any questions, please post a comment down below um, and let me know if you guys need to know anything or you guys want to see anything. I hope you guys enjoyed my previous two videos of the RSX. Uh, tune into the series. I made a series of the actual RSX, uh, this car in particular, so it's going to be a whole long series from, from everything I do to the car um, all the way up until the K, K Pro V4 gets installed, gets tuned. Um, I'm thinking about doing a, a championship white paint job with full um, OEM A-spec uh, lip kit, so it'll look really clean. Uh, I'm not going to get projector housing or uh, projector headlights at the time because I got the projector housing, but I wanted to stick to the regular OEM bulbs because they last longer. But um, Anyway, guys, yeah, thank you for tuning in. You guys should stay safe out there. Um, I'm only not wearing a mask at the time because I want you guys to see my face, but after this, I'm gonna put my mask back on. So, hope you guys are staying safe again and uh, and we'll get through this rough time together. All right, thanks you. Thank you, you guys for watching the videos and for the new subscribers, thank you for tuning in. For the old subscribers, I appreciate you all and have a great day, all right? Peace.